To become one of the best shooters in college basketball history takes persistence, confidence, and ability to handle failure. Many of those very characteristics lead to a well-rounded life off the court as well. Ryan Appleby describes the necessity of dealing with ourselves, becoming aware of guilt and shame, handling the social media poll, and much more. This is the second part of the interview, which was released a few months ago, and I hope you guys enjoy. Do you think part of your process as a shooter was to always stay almost postured or, or ready to, you know, let's say you start over three or over four? Like, what was your process to stay out of, like, oh, I'm in a slump or my shot's not feeling right? Because obviously, like you said, you hit two straight threes, you could change the whole game. It could be all yeah. erased from, from that. Statistically, it doesn't really matter. It's like you're doing your job when you're right. out there. Um, and they need you to hit those shots as if you're in your head and you're giving up after 0 for 4. It's like, okay, you're not helping anyone at this point. Um, but what was your process, I guess, if you were struggling out there? I always worked too. I knew I worked too hard, and it was too hard for me to get there to not believe in myself. I, I, you know, you've overcome enough adversity to get there, right? Mm. You know, and you got to always kind of remember where you came from, and you got to remember what you've done in the past, and you've overcome, you know, adversity. Those are those are big confidence builders, right? So, for me, I was always more surprised when I missed the shot. Um, <laughs> so, it wasn't a thing of well, you know, am I going to miss the next one? It was just about trying to get the next one off, yeah. especially when you're scouted. Right, and teams prepare for you, and they've set up defenses to stop you from shooting. Um, you know, it was more just can I can you get the next one off? So it didn't to me. It didn't necessarily bother me if I was missing shots or not. I think especially like in home games, you know, most people expected me to make every single shot that <laughs> right. I took, right? Which which wasn't uh, which wasn't reality. But I had the same expectation on myself, so I never really had. I never felt pressure to make shots because my expectation, like the crowd, was a lot of times I was going to make every single shot. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was just about it was about getting it off, um, as opposed to, you know, if I'm over three or over four or, or whatever it may be, um, you know, it to me it made me hungrier to try and find the next shot. So I gotta I gotta ask you. I found this video on YouTube. You got bopped by Aaron Brooks. What yeah. <laughs> what led up to that point? Were you talking some smack and and what, did it ca- catch you off guard a little bit? Like what 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 occurred there? Yeah, you know, I think that's <laughs> man. I don't know if that question will ever go away the day I die. <laughs> you know, it's kind of it's kind of odd. I wasn't ever the player to really uh, get in fights and games and things like that. I think uh, to me it was kind of I think to most of us that were involved it was kind of just like a freak thing that happened. You know, there wasn't trash talking or anything like that going on. I, from what I've, what what I learned from the situation was that uh, he was up guarding me pressure wise up at the top of the key, and I think he felt like I stepped into him uh, aggressively when I was ripping the ball through, and he didn't like it. And I think he must have been in a, a situation mentally or emotionally. Uh, where he was unstable to begin with, maybe coming into the game or whatever, um, because I think it was the next play down the floor. He kind of, you know, as I was coming off a screen, he was setting the screen. I was guarding one of the, his teammates coming off a screen, and as I came up and kind of came around the screen and stood up, you know, he caught me with an elbow uh, to the face, and I had eight stitches uh, because of it. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things that uh, – you know, I don't think anybody will ever stop asking me about. Yeah. It's something that, you know, it's it's you you move on from after a while and I don't really ever think about it unless somebody, you know, brings up brings it up and asks asks the question and it's uh it was kind of a freak thing, so I think that's why people remember it. It's not something that happens all the time and it wasn't something that you would have thought somebody like me would have been involved yeah. in as as well. So I think that's why the question comes up a lot. A lot of people are surprised about it if they don't remember it or never saw it. Um and they get to know me or talk to me. Um but uh you know, it was just another one of those situations that things happen, they're out of your control. You know, how are you gonna respond to it? How are you gonna react to it? Um, you know, it can either, uh, you know, kind of make you fearful and scared, um, or you can fight through the adversity of it and overcome it just like, like anything else. But we also talked about in Chelan, 
just the bridging of this knowledge, but also how you apply it and how you take take what you've heard. And it, yeah, it sounds great. You know, that that's what I would like to do and then take it and apply it. I and mean, we talked about, you know, in, in churches and different things, like how do you apply the wisdom that you're getting in, in that field? How do you apply the wisdom you're getting from the book or what you're hearing on this podcast? What what do you think is the, the balance in that field? We have almost like information junk food now yeah. or fast food. Yeah. Um, like how do you discern what's what's good information to, to a, try to apply and, and how do you do it? Yeah, I think, you know, especially if, if you're somebody that's that's on the Internet or social media a lot, you're, you're going to get hit with so much different information. And whether you realize it or not, subconsciously you're retaining it. Mm. Um, and I think a big thing for us is to filter out, first off, what we're looking at, you know, on the Internet or on social media, who we follow on certain accounts or whatever, um, uh, and then, and then after you've kind of filtered out the information that you're getting, I think that, uh, um, the kind of the, the level of discernment is kind of what speaks to you, right? Cause certain things are going to speak to you at different points in your life. And I think if, if you read something or, or listen to something and it's, and, and it kind of gives you a gut reaction or kind of hits you in a certain way where it's like, Whoa, mm. I think you need to follow that. And you need to go down that path. I think that it's gonna it's gonna teach you something. Um, and then it's the old saying that we haven't learned anything until we can apply it. Yeah. Right. And I think that if it's something to that degree, and where where you heard it from is the extent of it. I think because we have so many resources at our hands that we can spend the time, you know, emphasis spend the time hmm. to research it um, and to truly figure out why that spoke to us um i think that's 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 the big part is to take what's speaking to us the information that we see on the internet or on social media and actually dive deeper into it um as 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 part of that whole um of journey of kind of finding yourself and recreating yourself and improvement self-improvement and that whole thing um i i think it's it starts with kind of that gut instinct of you know why does why is this speaking to me right now the application part um, will come if you spend the time uh, actually researching uh, why it spoke to you and in, um, in a situation like that I think that uh, if you just read a quote right it can speak to you but you're you're gonna forget it in the next 20 minutes or 24 hours or something and you're not going to apply it I think the same lessons keep coming up in our life in different forms until we've actually learned them Hmm. and you know you can't learn it right uh, until you you can apply it what people don't realize is they're subconsciously retaining everything that they see Hmm. so it is it is it is the junk food fast food that you were talking about that is uh, filling your subconscious mind with those things and you are internalizing them and whether it's through your emotions or your thoughts or your mm. actions, they are they are playing out. I mean, if you looked at like my Instagram or something like that, you're like, this, this guy's weird. Like, how many people does he actually follow? He follows all these like accounts of like other stuff. And I'm like, if I'm gonna be on there, yeah. I'm gonna learn something, yeah. right? And that's to me the great thing about the internet and social media today. You can, there's so many different ways to learn from things. Mm-hmm. Um, like just on Instagram, even if it's something that you know, you're just kind of trying to learn, get started, learn yourself and just self-improvement in general, just quotes on there from the right accounts can kind of help steer you in the right direction and, and, you know, and make, and make you think. Um, but, but yeah, the, I, I see it all the time. Um, you know, I have to use my phone a lot for work, even it's emails and text messages and phone calls, you know, um, so I'm not retaining a lot of you know the junk food or 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 such but when i go so when i go on instagram or something i'm pretty mindful of what i'm seeing Mm. because i'm not on there for long enough periods of time and i don't follow enough accounts because people like they're they're zombies right they get when they get on their phones they're in that zombie state right you can see it their eyes kind of glaze over and they're kind of like they have no facial expression and they're kind of just like this is what's happening. This, 
right? They're not even blinking, <laughs> yeah. right? They're, and they're processing everything that they're seeing and, and they don't realize that they're processing it. Yeah, and it, it's going to come up and it does come up in different ways for, for different people. But I don't, what I don't understand about it is what do you feel like you're missing out on? The highlight reel of somebody else's life that they're portraying, which isn't true because we're all humans. We all know that nobody is doing all that cool stuff all the time. That's not life. Like what? Like what do you? What do you feel like you're missing? What are you missing out on? You know there. It, but you know you talk about that dopamine effect. Yeah, oh, bro. You know that's 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 really what they're doing. Yeah. Right. I mean they're hitting the vein, um, searching for that feeling. But I feel like I don't feel like I know that if you'll deal with yourself and you'll get past that point. Um, and deal with your wounds and all that, you don't need the dopamine effect. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't. When you can get, when you're in that, that peace of mind state, um, you know, that is a bigger high than anything. There's there's people, and I've seen it before, that are like super stressed but super motivated uh, to achieve, high achievers or whatever. And I was talking earlier about how they use that stress to, uh, to motivate themselves, to push themselves. Um, and you've seen people just break down and cry when they've had somebody sit with them for five to 10 minutes, let them speak about the stress that they're currently having in their life or their career. And then once they get it out, okay, just sit there, close your eyes, let's get your breath. And I want you to think about nothing. And if anything does come in, let it come in and let it go. And people break down and cry. Mm-hmm. And they seem like the coolest, most down-to-earth, driven, successful people. And they start to cry because they've never felt that. They've just never felt that peace of mind. Mm-hmm. Right? The peace which transcends all understanding, right, that they talk about in the Bible. It's peace of mind. That's what it is. Right. It's it's getting to that meditative state. And and I don't I don't spend a ton of time like when I'm talking to people about prayer and stuff, because I feel like for most people, when they're first like trying to learn about God or have a relationship, it's like the genie in the bottle thing. Right. Which a lot of people talk about. And it's like a Christmas list to Santa Claus or whatever. I think the first thing we need to do in order to become conscious um, is to tune everything out. Hmm. Right. And to tune everything out means you have that you're in that peaceful state of mind. And that's when you can hear God. And I believe whether you believe in God or not. You can hear God. Mm -hmm. I believe there's a lot of people that are addicted to yoga just for the meditation uh, time of yoga where you're stuck in a room. Right. You feel like yourself improving, you're relaxing, you're bettering yourself. Um, you're getting stronger, you're getting more flexible as you start to release the stress from doing all, all the stretching and stuff that's involved in yoga. You de-stress, you clear your mind, and then they have that meditative state at the end, right? And I believe that for those people that don't believe in God, that is the only time in their life where they actually get to experience God. Mm. And it's just from that simple space of the of the peace of mind um and i that's to me the true high is the peace of mind yeah i feel like it's getting harder and harder though because it's just so much we all have a we all we all have a choice yeah you know it's like does does your life have to get bad enough Mm. in order for you to do it do you have to get depressed enough and for most people because of we're living in in America and especially the middle class, things don't get bad enough. Our parents don't allow us to fight our own battles. We don't get put in situations that are super difficult for us where we have to deal with ourselves or deal with everything. Um, I think a big thing for me too, uh, getting into real estate and then getting into the part that I'm in now where there's a lot of risk involved and you're borrowing money Right, and you sign a deal, and it's like, okay, well, hey, what do you own? You own the house, your car, your boat. How much cash you got? You pull it down. Okay, well, if you you wrote all that down, if you sign this, 
and the deal doesn't work out, you have to give us all that. You know that, right? Mm. right? And we can still get a judgment for you for the amount that you borrowed. Think of where your headspace can go then. Mm-hmm. You know, And I think that's been something to me, too, that that's it's not about the money that I've made or, or like the achievement that I've had. I've been able to take myself mentally to a whole other level because of that, because in order to deal with that. Mm. There's a lot of dudes in my business that burn out that turn to drugs or alcohol to, to deal with themselves. Um, you've seen the movie, The Wolf of Wall Street. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite movies of all time. I love, I think it's one of the best comedies ever. But if you just look at Leonardo DiCaprio in that movie or The Wolf, why was he so obsessed with sex and drugs and alcohol? Just numbed him. Yeah, it took him out of all that pressure Mm. Right. And all the guilt. He knew he was cheating people, took him out of the guilt. It took him out of the gain, uh, uh, the guilt and the shame. And it took him out of the pressure that he was feeling. Right. It's escapism 101. Mm-hmm. Right. How do I escape from what I'm feeling? The external stuff that I talked about. That's why he did all those things. I mean, he was super smart, but he was also super greedy and super insecure. Right. And so those things kind of pushed him to to do what he did. But all the stuff that we laugh about, you know, the hookers and the drugs and the alcohol and all that, that was his escape. Yeah. That that that's why he did it, because he couldn't deal with himself and he couldn't deal with, uh, you know, the job that he had. And I see that a lot in my business, that people are plugging holes and they're escaping. Um, and they're not dealing with themselves. They're not dealing with the stress um, and the uncertainty that comes along. I listened to a guy talk, and I wish I could remember his name, like four or five months ago. Sugar, sex, Mm. salt are the three escapes that people will do at night if, uh, if they feel like they have some type of moral compass to escape. If they feel like they have a moral compass, like... They feel like something's coming up, bottling Meaning up. Meaning the moral compass of they're too, they're too good to do drugs oh, got or you. alcohol got or you. something like that. They'll use sugar, sex, or salt as an escape. The because they it's a uh, it it balances us chemically. The sugar, the sex, and the salt. One of those three. It balances us, and it's actually a de-stressor. Mm. You know, it's like there's a lot of people that are. Uh, they call themselves foodies. A lot of they're eating their feelings, mm-hmm. right? It gives them that kind of same type of dopamine high. It escapes. It takes their mind off of the things that are really bothering them, right? And you know, as you get older and you slow down, well, what happens? You get old and fat. Sick. Right, you're killing yourself. Right, I talked. I talked to you about this in Chelan about the doctor I go to and his, how basically everything, all all the disease and everything that he sees, he he sees that it's all based on or says that it's all based on um, people's emotions, and he he know like he'll tell you, hey, you're thinking about this person, or and he won't say the specific name, um, or you're. Or you're thinking about this situation or that, and that's put you into this state of sickness or disease or whatever it, uh, or whatever it may be. Because of the reactions or the actions that you take from it, or whatever. It the actions be. that you take from it, but just just the thoughts that you're having yeah. from it is it's it's making your thoughts are making you sick, mm. and people don't realize that it goes back to the external thing of how to fix it. Well, take medication for it. Great, treat the symptom, not the disease. I, you know, that whole thing where you can tell the difference between a, a real, a good doctor and a bad doctor. They're going to sp- prescribe something for the symptom as opposed to give you a, a solution to, you know, to fix or treat the disease. One thing you, you really st- stuck out to me was uh, I think you talked about guilt and shame and how that holds people down. And you also talked about how it, it kind of forms a moral compass in some way. And that actually pr- spoke to me pretty deeply I was like I was trying to think about hey what you know what guilt and shame am I holding on and how does that affect how I interact with people or view people or maybe even judge people yeah. in certain ways um, if you could speak on that and I guess the lessons you've learned um, through I guess letting go of your guilt and shame if, if you sure. have any or, or whatever yeah I think you know we're 
we're like I said, we're souls on a human experience, right? I, th- I think we're here for a big part, um, you know, to serve others and to improve ourselves. I think a big part of us improving ourselves too is serving other people. Hmm. I think that the more we, like I was saying earlier in basketball, I learned so so much from just the more I put into something, the more I got back from it. And the more you love something, the more you get back from it, right? I think that I think we've all got to do a better job in general of of getting ourselves uh, uh, in that in that state of peace, in that state of love, um, where we can where we can flow from there. Um, you know, learning to to know yourself, um, as opposed to you know, kind of it comes back to like the religion versus relationship um, conversation, and I think that a lot of times religion will try and manipulate you, and they'll use guilt or shame to get you to follow a certain set of rules. Um, and I think that that guilt and shame kind of becomes our barometer on if we're a good person or not. And then I think we we don't consciously realize it, but then we end up judging people mm. for the same, let's say, issues that we feel guilt or shame from. And we judge somebody else because then it makes ourselves feel better mm. about our own guilt and shame. And I think we've. It's. I think it's. It's. It's a learned behavior from, from religion where you're. You don't measure up. You're not good enough. It's the performance mindset. Um, if you don't f- follow all these things and you're not perfect, right? Um, I think that's to the, to me, in my opinion, that's where a lot of it. A lot of it comes from. And we unconsciously use that guilt and shame, to judge ourselves and and other people. And I think we've got to we've got to get out of that state, that that mindset. And I think a lot of it comes from understanding that, you know, if you are somebody that believes in Jesus, right, that you're, uh, you know, you're accepted and you're loved regardless uh, of your performance that day, that minute, that week, that month. I I think you've got to really get over that, and you've got to truly truly believe that, and you've got to experience it mm. um, because it will affect you know, the relationships that you have as you go through your life, family, friends, significant others that you have in your life. You've got to have the courage to deal with yourself. Um, you've got to be, uh, you've got to be willing um, to admit you have wounds because hmm. everybody does. Everybody has wounds and you got to deal with them. You can't keep them inside. Um, you, you've got to, you've got to deal with them because you'll get, you'll be stuck. And you'll feel stuck in your yeah. life too, but you won't really understand why because you've suppressed them. You've pushed them down so far and you act, they'll come up every once in a while in your mind, but you felt like, oh yeah, no big deal, push up. I might have dealt with that. You haven't emotionally dealt with it. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of people, especially males, their actions come out through their wounds. Yeah, I mean, having the courage to, I guess, to do that, but also if you see something in there, it's like, okay, like I'm dealing with it, but also not having that as judgment to the, to the world. Like, I think that's when I, I took meditation the wrong way. Mm -hmm. It's like, I didn't really want to understand what was coming up. I just wanted to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Like I just wanted all these things to go away and me to feel how I thought was peak feeling. Right. I didn't want to actually note like, okay, why was that there? Why is that thought there? Why am I feeling this way? And I think that's the difference. Like that's the courage that really is. It's not yeah. like allow yourself to feel it. Drug. Yeah, that's exactly. That's where the courage starts. Allow yourself to when it comes up and you're in that meditative state. Allow yourself to feel it. Yeah. Allow yourself to go through that that cycle of emotions, and then it will be gone. And the more you do it, you're healing yourself, mm-hmm. and you'll gain understanding from it as you go along as well. But you've got you've got to allow yourself to feel it. And as guys. And in sports, like guys that grew up playing sports, there, there are, there's no such thing as feelings, right? It's the old, mm-hmm. it's the old saying. There's no crying in baseball, right? You don't, you don't feeling things is weakness, mm. right? And it's and it's really not. You need to deal with the thing so you can overcome them, so that you can be better. Overcoming something gives you strength, right? I mean, it does. That that's what gives you strength. You know, you start mm-hmm. with the courage, and then you gain the strength because you've overcome it, and you've the courage is to allow yourself to feel it and process it and move on. And it's not gone that first time, mm-hmm. you know, and there's no, there's no timeline that you need to set for yourself to overcome whatever that wound is. 
right? There's no, you don't, don't put an expectation that I need, this needs to be gone in the next three weeks or three months or three years. Just focus on dealing with it in that state that you're in. Mm. That's beautiful, man. Shit. Where did you learn all this stuff? Uh, Just reading? I learned things from my personal journey. Yeah. Self-reflection, failures, success, reading, talking to people, listening to people, and self-reflecting on the things that people say, the things that I read, the videos that I watched, the podcasts that I've listened to, being honest about my own journey and why things worked out and why they didn't work out, taking personal responsibility for times that that were seen as failures, even though they weren't. You know, Tony Robbins has said this for 20 years, uh, that uh, things don't happen to you, they happen for you. Sometimes we need a period uh, of time to pass before we go, whoa, you know, that actually worked out for me. In the moment, I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. Mm-hmm. How did, why did that just happen? No, it happened for me. It pushed me into the direction or the path that I, that I should have been on. Things worked out. Uh, and looking back, well, they wouldn't have worked out if it would have happened this way or the way I thought I wanted it to happen. But um, that's, that's a big thing to understand is things don't, happen to you they happen for you if you're in that stressful fight or flight state though your reactionary state is worst case scenario oh no the world's ending like this is that one thing that can't happen and now it's happening it's not it yeah it's that's 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 where you you've got to get to we all got to get to is is allowing understanding that things are going to happen to us right and they're the majority of the time um they're they're there for our benefit sometimes we got to live life though and and have the situations and be self-reflective in order to see them Mm -hmm. um but it is a it is something if that if we can learn the 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 hindsight's 2020 get perspective be self-reflective um because even at your age you've had enough experiences You've lived long enough. You've been through middle school, high school, college. You've played sports. You've had a ton of experiences, right? How, how much time have you spent being self-reflective of those, being open, open and honest with yourself, being accountable for the things that happened, you know, taking responsibility for them, understanding and telling yourself, you chose this. You chose this. When I choose something, I don't get to determine everything that comes along with it but I chose it. I chose to play basketball. I chose to go to this school. Um, those things didn't happen to me and they were negative. They happened for me. I am where I'm at in my life right now because it is uh, it's exactly where I'm supposed to be. I'll get to the next point in my life that I can visualize or see because now I'm willing to be self-reflective and deal with myself and deal with those things, right? Do you feel like it's easier not to do that? Like, oh, yeah. Like See, if, if if you were like distract yourself, yeah, like fuck fuck this, like I don't want to distract wanna talk yourself. About it. We have so many opportunities to distract ourselves now. Mm. We've got you've got uh, a million shows on Amazon, Hulu, and Netflix, <laughs> Comcast. You've got uh, four different social media platforms or more. You've got YouTube. Um, you know, you've got a million hobbies or activities you can get to. Everything's at your fingertips now. You can. You can, uh, you know, plug all, like I was saying earlier, all the external things that we use to try and solve our problems or fix ourselves. You've got them at your fingertips nowadays. So, yeah, it's super easy to not have to deal with them. And I, But I don't think we realize that when we're, like, suppressing those things, we don't really feel that good. We're always oh, we're has, searching for highs. Yeah. We're always searching for highs because we're in our low. So we always need something uh, to get a, to get our high, to get that fix. You know, you're a junkie at the it's end the dopa- of the day. It's like the dopamine. It's the dopamine effect, yeah. right? It's w- why the crack addict needs crack, right? They've got to get they've got to get to that high. They they can't they don't want to deal with themselves. They don't want to be open and honest with the things that they've done or things that have happened in their past. Mm-hmm. They don't. 
you know. But, you know, there's there was a time in the world where you didn't have anything but mountains, bushes, and trees, and desert, and water, and a couple people around you. Mm. And that was it, and you had to deal with yourself, right? I, I think now we have so many distractions yeah. that uh, that we can go through so much of our life just being okay and yeah. not really fulfilling our purpose or not maximizing our abilities or, or potential that we have um, because it's just okay to be okay because culturally and status-wise, if you're in the middle ground and you're like everybody else, you're fitting in, then nothing's wrong mm. because you're like everybody else, right? And we were I don't feel like we were created for that. I feel like we were created to stand out um, and to be our best. And I don't think we go through that soul journey, right, in the human body and a human experience um, without dealing, um, you know, with with that physical um, uh, human uh, interaction. Yeah, man, that's that's pretty deep. Um, so I like to finish off every every single podcast. You know, people who come in just with a challenge, obviously. You, you like to challenge yourself on and off the basketball court, but, you know, it could be a simple challenge. It could be, you know, something big in the long run, like we talked about, you know, a process of becoming something or practicing something, or it could be something small, you know, a, a day-to-day thing or something they do just for one day. Um, just maybe something that sticks out to you right now or something that you've been challenging yourself in that you could give for our viewers. Yeah. Uh, challenges are great. I think that, uh, I hope people see the value in the challenge before they do it, because if they do, they'll stay committed to it. Mm. I think the biggest thing is the first, what, what do you do the first 15 minutes of your day, in my opinion, just as starting out on, on the journey of mindfulness and meditation and visualization, you know, uh, peace of mind, happiness, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, what do you do the first 15 minutes? Can you take the first 10 minutes and just get your peace of mind? Right? Not look at your phone, not worry about what's going to happen in your day, what could or what couldn't. Uh, not worry about what you need to get done that day. Is it going to get accomplished? Isn't it going to get accomplished? Not worrying about the mistakes you made yesterday or um, you know anything from the, from the past or, or the future. And just get your peace of mind um, in that meditative state. Um, some people pray in that meditative state. Some people, some people just try and be still. I think, you know, I said earlier, you know, be still and know that I am God, right? I think that is, uh, that's something that you need to remind yourself of when you wake up. Can you be in that? So the challenge is to be in that state for that meditative kind of peace of mind state for those 10 minutes starting out. And then can you visualize what you want uh, for five minutes? Can you take the first 15 minutes of your day just mm. to do that? I think if somebody can do that for 30 days straight, they will continue to add time in the mornings, and then they'll add time at night, and they'll add times uh, throughout the day, and they'll become way more conscious of the thoughts that they think and the feelings and the emotions that they have um, and how much they're uh, reacting um to things that come up during their day negatively as opposed to, um, you know, being more strategic and being mindful of, of the emotions and the thoughts that they're having. So I think it's a 15-minute challenge in the morning to get into that peace of mind state. And then that last five minutes, visualize what you want in your life. Visualize the success that you want, whether that's in your career or relationally or just being a happy person, whatever it may be, the things that you value right? Um, and the things that you want, spend that five minutes after that meditative state to, um, to, to see yourself becoming them, right? Um, I think that would be the, the, the big value challenge for people. I love it, man. Well, thank you very much for, for coming on. Thank you. I'm very grateful to have listened to you, and I'm, I think a lot of people will gain a lot from it, bro. So thank you. Thank you so much for you know, coming on and sharing, sharing your experience and what you've learned along the way. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. feel blessed to be here. Um, you know, I think this is, uh, this is an oppor- 
awesome opportunity that you're providing for people. Uh, the Flow Podcast, I think, is something that you're going to keep gaining a ton from. I think other people will gain um, as well, and we need we need more of these where people are just kind of open, open and honest about their journey, um, their ups and their downs, successes and failures. And, you know, this is a great platform, um, you know, to help do that. Appreciate it, brother. All right, my guy. Thanks. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you enjoyed the podcast, please share with your friends to spread the word. You can follow me on Instagram at Flow Station Podcast and find all the interviews on iTunes, Spotify, and the video version on YouTube. Thanks again, and keep flowing.